name is Twice Barks, and today, like, I would like to make a little bit of a new video, um, a little bit, a uh, bit of different content than you're used to seeing from me. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this uh, type of content on my channel from now on. I really like to spark discussion. I really like talking about things with people. And today, um, I would like to draw some parallels between sports psychology and the FGC. I think the FGC is an extremely competitive environment. It's one that I've been in for a very long time, and it's one of the more interesting communities out there. But I wanted to talk about like the sports psychology of it, and you know, see how we as intermediate players can maybe improve, and maybe even some high-level players, pro players, who may actually benefit from this. Um, so, on my journey to improve as an intermediate player, um, I've been trying different things, like uh, trying different methods to, you know, enhance my gameplay, enhance my experience, uh, stream more, and uh, today I would like to talk about, you know, on this channel, I would like to talk more about the socioeconomical standpoint of the SGC, uh, how can we maybe improve some things, like uh, quality of tournaments maybe, like you'll see more discussion about this on my channel from now on, but today I actually wanted to talk about some of the parallels I've seen between sports psychology, the FGC, and what actually goes in to becoming a better player, right, over time, right? So one of the first things I wanted to talk about um, was goal setting, which is uh, something in sports psychology that's actually recommended is, you know, helping players to set specific challenging and achievable goals. So, you know, a lot of it's real, a lot of people in the FGC have goals, aspirations, um, like different things that they would like to achieve, being a better content creator, being a better tournament player, and you know, one thing that's actually helped me on my journey is realistically goal setting. Like, they actually advocate for this in sports psychology, from what I've researched, in, you know, setting small achievable goals for yourself, doing better at your next local, uh, doing better at that online tournament you keep entering, you know, and implementing more things with your characters, you know, stuff like that is, you know, what helps you to gradually improve instead of putting so much on your plate and trying to do all this stuff at once, play all these games, writing realistic, tangible goals uh, for yourself to be able to achieve uh, within the parameters you set for yourself, right? The parameters we set for ourselves as players. And so I think goal setting actually helps at any level, whether it's pro level or intermediate level or beginner levels, because like when you have a goal for yourself, that you'd like to reach and you make that you get to that goal you know you're more likely to be more pumped for the next goal right and so that's another that's one parallel in sports psychology that i think would benefit players in a lot of ways or that honestly i even see some people kind of do already where it's like they kind of set goals for themselves like i had a couple of friends uh who were like hey you know i want to play street fighter and it would be really nice if i made it, made it to diamond three you know, and I'm stuck at Diamond 3, but I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? That's kind of gauging where how good I am at this game, kind of, right? Or, you know, my friend who's, like, perpetually stuck in Plat 5, right? And his goal right now is to get Diamond, right? Of course, the end goal in Street Fighter, you know, for some people, is to get Master, right? It's not a bad goal. Like, for me, I would like to get the Master. That's a goal, that's a small goal I'm setting for myself um, that I actually would love to achieve, I'm hoping to achieve, and I have every confidence that I can achieve it. And so the next thing I want to talk about when drawing parallels from sports psychology to FGC is uh, imagery. Like, using mental imagery to visualize success. I think we as players, you know, we get so caught up in playing the game that we kind of forget to use mental imagery for our success, right? So mentally imagining your success in the game, mentally imagining your game plan, what you're trying to execute, uh, what it is you're trying to get better at, right? What tool you're trying to implement. These are all things that I think we as players could benefit more from, right? Imagery, right? Or you might already be doing this. Imagining your success is the quickest way to being successful and it's you know it's taken me a long time to kind of learn that as I've gone on my journey to improve as a player is imagining your success is 
in my opinion, like a key factor in actually reaching your success. And so the next parallel I would actually like to draw between sports psychology and the FGC that I think more people can benefit from is concentration, right? Now, you have everybody, you know, everybody's different, right? Everybody concentrates at a different capacity. Other things, certain things help other people concentrate better. And, you know, teaching players how to focus their attention on the present moment, blocking out distractions, you know, that's especially in high stress environments. And this is more for, you know, more for people who are like, you know, they're really serious, they're really competitive, they're trying to win the event, or, you know, they're trying to place really well, um, you know, is staying centered under pressure, um, like meditation, breathing exercises, going back to character select. You know, we're all warriors here, right, in a sense, right? So, you know, let's act like it. Let's use some meditative techniques. Let's, like, breathe in and breathe out. Like, uh, you know, these are all things that help you stay under pressure. Like, stay calm under pressure, right? Um, you know, putting good things in your body, getting eight hours of sleep. Like, those are all things that I think that gamers, especially fighting game players, don't do enough, right? Uh, to improve their overall concentration, right? I think it would help a lot if, you know, we as players actually took better care of ourselves and we actually, you know, tried to get eight hours of sleep, tried to not, you know, eat junk food all day, play the game for like six hours, you know, like just get outside, like get some fresh air, right? You know what I mean? Like that, that, those, these are all things that actually help concentration, right? I think playing the game an unhealthy amount actually doesn't help concentration a lot. But in that, right? The next point I would like to point out is, uh, next parallel I would like to point out, right, is self-confidence, right? Now, we all know those people who are nasty, right, who are really good at the game, or, you know, even if you're just moderately good, or, like, you know, you're just okay, right? You could be a lot better if you had more confidence, right? I'm also talking to myself here because I've had problems with self-confidence in the past where it's like, you know, building up players' confidence in their abilities, you know, it's more than just the game, right? It's like outside factors, right? You know, uh, how do I look today? Did I shower, right? Did I get a new outfit? Am I expressing myself? You know, being confident in your ideas as a player, right? You know, you might have had an idea that you think, didn't think was super good, but, you know, um, you kind of do it anyways, right? And that's having confidence in your ideas, right? In your abilities, right? So if you think that you can do something, do it, right? That increases your confidence. That ultimately helps you, right? So I say all that to say, build up your confidence. You know, don't negative self-talk, right? Talk to yourself. Be able to uh, express your thoughts, feelings, emotions, uh, you know, in private or in a journal, uh, you know, talk to yourself, uh, you know, not negative self-talk, positive self-talk. Positive self-talk correlates with self-confidence. And the next thing I would like to point out, emotional regulation. Emotional regulation is something that I feel like also goes hand in hand with the concentration aspect of fighting games because emotional regulation is what helps players to manage you know, manage their emotions during competition, right? You, we've all had those people who are like, you know, they pop off a little too hard, or it's like, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're doing something mad rude, or, you know, somebody gets mad and gets salty and they throw the controller, right? That's all part of emotional regulation. Emotional regulation is, you know, it's controlling what's happening within, right? So, like, when we say, when people, say go back to character select take a breather right that's a part of emotional regulation and taking a minute to breathe under high stress environments it'll save you in the wrong run right remember it's not always the game it's the tool you're not using to your advantage enough and so when we sit here and we get salty at another player's character or we sit here and we get salty about say you know, uh, the game itself, you know, it's really easy to kind of get lost in the sauce, right? Like, you know, it's really easy to get lost in our emotions and kind of let them take control. So I say that to a lot of players in hopes that this will, you know, be, you know, some helpful advice in like being able to 
not only control your emotions in you know outside the game but control your emotions inside the game right it'll ultimately help you but it'll also help us treat each other better right and the next thing that also goes hand in hand with that is coping with stress right teaching players how to deal with stress and pressure right like in, in sports psychology like people work with coaches and parents and other sports stakeholders and creative supportive environments we have the as the fgc you know we're all an ecosystem we work with content creators uh you know, par- some people who have parents in the FGC who are supportive, like, you know, there are parents that come out to events, um, there are sponsors, you know, there's supportive environments for us, you know, we, we, you know, we as an FGC, we would, I would like to see us as the FGC promote, you know, an optimal performance of well-being, right? We could benefit from that particular structure we're an ecosystem we all work together right you know we could help each other grow a lot better right with you know as we learn and identify what stresses us out coping with stress knowing what triggers you right like what things can you know what outside factors are affecting you in the game right or outside the game right which could uh ultimately be uh hindering your performance or you know hurting you right so make sure that you know how to cope with stress right like everybody knows themselves and they know what makes them stressed right so just do you right make sure that you know what it is that's causing you stress and once you find out what's causing you stress you'll be able to you know not only be better but you know you'll be able to get nice you know what i mean be better at the game right so identifying your stressors whether it's work work related you've got kids you've got you know adult responsibilities bills it's tough out here you know just take a minute to relax right you guys deserve it like you know sit your head back maybe drink a cold one you know what i mean just sit back relax enjoy your life enjoy the game not everything is about winning uh, don't stress yourself out on the game too much. And my next point that goes into all of that as well. So in sports psychology that I've studied, um, taking control of your thoughts when you are feeling stressed, identifying those stressors goes in to taking control of your thoughts. So you take control. You take control of your thoughts. Um, you know if. Your thoughts can become very negative and overwhelming, and it's important to take control and focus on the positive. Remind yourselves of your strengths and your abilities. Visualize yourself performing at your best. Visualize yourself performing better. Like, so I've seen a lot of pros playing in fighting games, right? You know, for a long time on streams, you know, in high pressure situations when like everything's on the line. I would like to say um, a lot of those players, I think the biggest thing that separates, you know, better players from those below them is being able to take control of your thoughts, right? And be able to turn a situation around in your mind, not just in the game, but in your mind, right? So like, if you're just saying like all this mean stuff to yourself, if you're just sitting here saying like, oh, well, you know, I'm never going to beat X and X and my tools keep getting stuffed and yada, yada, yada. Like, even if you lose, right, you can always take away something from that match, right? You can always sit here and be like, man, this dude just played better than me, right? Like, GG's, I got to do, you know, some better stuff next time, right? There's always a, I can play better at the end of it, right? And, you know, even outside the game, if you're thinking all this negative stuff, I don't think you're really going to get anywhere, right? So you could take that, put it in game, and be like, hey, okay, you know, he's doing a lot of this, maybe try this, right? The worst thing that can happen is that you, you're wrong and you try something else, right? And that's the difference between having a problem-solving mindset you know, versus a negative mindset, right? Being able to solve your problems, being able to, like, make sure that your mental is not saying all this, like, terrible stuff, right? You got to catch yourself, right? That's taking control of your thoughts. So, another thing that goes into that is 
uh, I talked about this before, practicing relaxation techniques. Um, yoga might help for some people, breathing might help. I know a lot of people play games uh, to cope with stress. Uh, getting enough sleep, seven to eight hours of sleep, ideally. Eating a healthy diet. Um, we as gamers technically tend to neglect our exercise, so none of us really exercise regularly. So it's important to actually exercise more, like get the most benefit out of our bodies, talk to close friends. These are all coping strategies. You know what I mean? Like these are all things we could do to help control our thoughts, our bodies. Um, like have self-confidence, concentrate, imagine a better future, goal set. These are all things that go into that, right? And the next thing I would like to talk talk to or talk about is um, that the players themselves, we have a hard time treating our fellow player as individuals outside their characters, right? You know, it's there's no one size fits all approach to the FGC games. You know, the the fighting games, I should say. Um, one size fits all approach to the FGC lifestyle. Everyone's different, and we all excel at different things. Um, one way of being or routine may not work for everyone. And the reason why this goes into being play like players being individuals is that we all have like different ideas, right? Like, we all get discouraged when, like, somebody, like, kind of shoots down our idea or doesn't think it's good, right? But that's why I encourage people to try it anyways. Even if somebody else says it's bad, it could work for you, right? It could work for you, and it could do wonders. And, you know, people might not know how to fight it because you have a different mindset or an outlook on it, right? Don't stifle your creativity just because somebody else tells you it's a bad idea, right? And, like, you know, because if you think it's going to work, try it, right? We all, we as fighting game players have a really bad habit of putting, like, players in a box and marginalizing them. And we might not even, like, you know, understand what their strengths are, right? And, honestly, some people are really bad at giving advice, right? And we don't know exactly what to say to that person from our lens or point of view that's, you know that's going to make them see it how we see it, right? But also, players, don't lose confidence in your ideas, right? Keep trying it. And if it doesn't mesh with you, just stop doing it. If it does, keep working at it until you get it, right? And then also, past the game plans and shooting down efforts, right? We also have a hard time treating each other as individuals past our characters, right? You know, because we all have a habit of saying mean and salty things online to each other. And, you know, like, saying, oh, well, all Ken players, or blah, 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 or, like, all JP players, or blah, 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 right? Or yada, 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 oh, these characters are broken. These, you know, like, we, we have a hard time, like, at we have a hard time detaching the character from the person. And so, I say all that to say that... Um, we gotta do better, guys. We gotta treat people as individuals. I get that it's passion, you know, we're in a passionate genre and things get heated, but I think that there's a better way to cope with that response, right? There's a better way to cope with that stress of, you know, uh, having to play against certain characters, right? And this goes back into coping strategies, right? Like, drawing these parallels has, you know, honestly made me think about the genre as a whole a lot differently, right? So, I get it's passionate, but make sure you separate the character from the individual, right? And so, another thing I would like to, a thing I would like to remind uh, the community about is that, you know, I've seen a lot of discourse about, you know, the collaborative effort of the FGC, especially when it comes to TOs and content creators and stuff like that, companies, you know, we're all big, e one big ecosystem, and we all work together, right? And we all thrive. When one of us is thriving, you know, we all thrive, you know? Instead of throwing each other under the bus to get more opportunities, you know, we gotta get more opportunities for everyone, right? You know, I remember that Tong put out a tweet a couple of days ago about, you know, people being upset that Street Fighter and MK1 have, like, 45% of the entrance at CEO Docker, right? And, you know, one thing that resonated 
with me when I was reading tweets was one guy commented that, you know, one, th one thing people don't get is that if Street Fighter is doing well or Mortal Kombat is doing well, we're all doing well. And, you know, I play a lot of, I, li I play a lot of anime games, right? I pr primarily play anime games for this part. This is like my first Street Fighter game. And like, you know, it doesn't really make sense to me where it's like, we're all mad that one of the most long running popular franchises is doing well, you know, and that means fighting games are doing well, right? Fighting games are at an all time high. Fighting game players are doing more things, right? And so it's like, it's just kind of backwards to me that we as players were kind of like on the more like spiteful end when like one game does better than the other. And, you know, this goes back into like, you know, the mental health aspect of it or, you know, identifying stressors or like identifying what it is you're really upset about. And if more people could look at it like this, Whereas, if one of us is doing well, we're all doing well. And so if we're all doing well, that means fighting games and the FGC as a whole are thriving. And so because we're all doing well, we're all thriving because Street Fighter's thriving, right? That That's a happy FGC. And so I say all that to say, we could do better, right? We could absolutely do better. We could be kinder to each other. We can appreciate our TOs more because, in my opinion, fighting games are one of the best things to have ever happened to me. I don't like taking them for granted at all, right? I don't like taking for granted the ecosystem that we've been in, right, for a very long time, and that we're all we all work together. We all share the same passion. We're all we all have. You know, we're all having a collaborative effort when you put out content, right? Even the smallest content creators who put out content are putting back into the FGC um, ecosystem. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So everybody keep doing themselves, right? And, you know, just we have to do better and we have to realize that we all are in this together. And so the next point I want to talk about is... Um, the same thing with sports, right? My brother plays sports. My sister is an athletic trainer. And um, I play fighting games, but I also played sports. You know, I boxed, right? And the thing I've learned about any type of discipline, like, because I consider fighting games a discipline in a sense, right? So I consider fighting games a discipline. And the thing I've learned on this journey um, is that fighting games are a lifelong journey, right? Um, Players can benefit from sports, right? Uh, players can benefit from fighting games, right? It's all dependent on your mindset. You know, at any stage of your career, you can benefit from knowledge or pointers. At any stage in your journey, you can benefit from playing with homies and late at night or just going to get food and, you know, being social and just, you know, living your best life as a player. Like, if you find your group, you know, just hang out with them. You know, be healthy with them, right? Train with them, right? Understand that we're all on a journey together and we're all on a journey of self-improvement. No matter how far you want to take this, whether it's just a hobby for you, whether you're just training to beat your friends, you know what I mean? If you continue doing it, if you can continue being a competitive gamer and you continue being a fighting game player, you realize somewhere along this, you know, along the line that it's a lifelong journey and that you're going to be working towards being the best version of yourself always. And so I say all that to say that, you know, we all use fighting games as like either a way to escape or a way to better ourselves, you know, to fight past, you know, for some people they use it to fight past their trauma, you know, it helps with the depression, you know, like I myself have dealt with feelings of not being good enough, especially as a player or as a person, right? We've all been there, but we, this affects players every day and I'm here to say to you guys that it gets better, right? Your thoughts get better. Your thoughts get clearer the more you, you know, the more you play, the more you seek out a positive experience, the more it comes to you, right? And so, like, just keep working at it, right? Improvement isn't linear, right?
right as people or as a fighting game player. And so I say all that to say that just keep grinding, right? Nobody, nobody, one, no one person improves at the same rate as another person, right? And so, like, just enjoy the journey. Like, enjoy the sauce. Get lost in it, right? Try a new character, right? Try something new. Try a new game. Because what's the worst thing that could happen, right? You just don't like it, right? And then you try something else. So, you know, just have faith. Stay confident. Like, we're all on this journey together. We're all on the same boat. So, the next thing I would like to say, um, and this goes hand in hand with, you know, sort of, I want to say the sports psychology mentality, or honestly, like, just competitive mentality in general, right? Um, when social media is in the mix. So, in my opinion, social media is necessary, but to an extent. So, social media being necessary to an extent, like, social media is a great thing to have on our side as FGC players, right? We are constantly using social media to talk to developers, we are constantly using it to promote events, we are constantly using it to share tech with people, and it's a great thing to have. But it can also play a huge factor in, you know, mental health decline, right? When you're too involved in social media, and you're, you know, you're, you're too involved in trying to tweet something or, you know, you're being salty, like you're doing a salt tweet after a tournament and you don't give yourself like 30 minutes and you like post the first thing that comes to mind because you're mad. Like it has a huge impact on mental health. It's not, it's, you know, it's not healthy for you as a player to be excessively using it. And like, you know, it's a great thing to have, right? It's the excessive use of it is what I think is a huge problem, right? And the huge impact it has on the ecosystem, good and bad, right? You see the bad side of it um, all the time, actually, when people get into discourse, when people have arguments, um, when, you know, people just harass each other online for no reason. And it's like, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's social media has become such a battlefield for us whereas it honestly should be just a place where people actually just talk and have like meaningful discussion and be nice to each other right but that's also not the reality sometimes right so i say all that to say is that it is necessary but i would definitely curtail my usage of it in the future outside of promoting content or you know promoting that I'm going to, say, a tournament, or saying that, um, I'm posting a video, or whatever, right? Like, so, I've been trying to, uh, instead of tweeting everything I say, journaling everything I think, especially when it pertains to a game, and I find that it's actually more productive than, like, tweeting things, because it's something I can tangibly see that's in front of me that I can keep track of that's not inherently negative, right? And so the last point I would try to make, and I'll probably leave this video at that, like this was a video of me like pointing out like some of the uh, psychological uh, things in sports psychology that can actually help FGC players, especially those at the intermediate level. Um, and so my last point is, this is for the community as a whole, is to be kinder to each other, right? Like, we gotta be kinder to each other. It's hard out here, guys. Just don't be a dick, right? Let's be better for each other. It all, everything in this ecosystem takes time, right? Everything takes time. And, like, you know, you may not be, like, uh, you may be at one point of your journey today, but you could be at another point of it tomorrow. And we have a hard time being kind to each other as people. And so I would like to see more people just in general be kinder to each other, right? I want us to thrive. I want everyone to thrive. If Mortal Kombat 1 thrives, we all thrive, right? If if X game is thriving, we're all thriving because we're all eating, right? Because we're all it's paying attention to the genre, right? So just have respect for each other, you know what I mean? Just at the end of the day, we're all human, right? 
So things I would actually like FGC players to try in correlation with sports psychology, right, is to set specific challenging and achievable goals, imagery, visualize success performances and improve your skills, concentration, players who can focus attention on the present moment and block out distractions will ultimately do better, self-confidence, players with high self-confidence are more likely to believe in their abilities and perform well under pressure, emotional regulation, players who can manage their emotions during competition are more likely to perform at their best, coping with stress, players who have effective coping mechanisms for dealing with stress are more likely to perform at their best. And that's all for this video guys, my name is Twice Sparks, and I'll catch you on the flip side.